Hi everyone, welcome to the science department. It's a real shame that you can't be with us this afternoon. We've got some great things that we've got videoed for you to watch. But before that, we just wanted you to meet some of the science department. So my name's Mr. Arnold, I'm the head of science, and my specialism is chemistry. Hello everyone, my name's Mr. Smith, and I am a biology teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Day, and I am the physics teacher. Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Lynch, and my specialism is chemistry. And I am Mrs. Scott, and I also do biology, and I hope you enjoy our experiments. Okay, so in biology, we try as much as possible to use animals to demonstrate things that are happening in humans. Here we have some pig's lungs, and as you can see, the lungs are just above the liver. Now, it looks like the liver is much bigger than the lungs, but look what happens when we inflate them. are able to expand much more when they're filled with air. Also interesting enough, the lungs have the heart underneath them and that's what we're going to do next. As Mrs Scott said, uh, this is a dissection of the heart. Um, so um, I've positioned the heart on the dissection board and I've identified which side is which. So this, if it were in my body, or the animal's body would be the left-hand side of the heart, and this would be the right-hand side of the heart. How do I know that? Because of the uh, thickness of the muscular walls um, that I can feel. So I can feel here that this side is very loose and very thin, and this side is much more thick and reinforced, and we'll hopefully show that um, when we actually cut into it. So what I'm going to do first of all is just cut into the right-hand side of the heart to show the, um, the two chambers on that side. So I've just cut through the septum a little bit there, but if I can open this out a little bit, the septum is the center of the heart that separates the left and right hand side. If I can separate this out, you can see this is the right ventricle, um, which is the uh, right hand side lower chamber of the heart that would be um, pumping deoxygenated blood to the lungs to become oxygenated. And you can see in here that we have the valve present here so that is between the right atria which would be receiving deoxygenated blood from the body and um, that allows the blood to flow into the right ventricle and prevents it flowing back up the wrong way um, if i cut into the other side you see how thin see how thin the wall of the right hand side of the heart is really really thin and that's due to the distance it has to pump only has to pump the blood up to the heart uh, up to the lungs and back to the heart so if i cut into the left hand side let's try and open it out completely you can see again um, you've got the valve here between the left atria and the left ventricle and then you can see these which I sort of pointed out um, in the right hand side but didn't really talk about there um, I suppose what would be known as the the heart strings and they prevent the valve from turning inside out when the uh, ventricle contracts to push the blood out and the big 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 difference that you can see there is the thickness of the wall of the left hand side of the heart um, it's so much thicker so much more powerful um, muscle there and that's because of the distance that the blood has to travel um, so from the left hand side of the heart you would be uh, pumping oxygenated blood all the way around your body and then it would come back in to the top of the right hand side of the heart here which would be the right atria um, you've got blood vessels coming out the top of the heart so 
arteries are coming out. So you can see these here and I can probably potentially put my fingers through some of them if I can find the right ones. Okay, I'm putting my fingers up through atria at the moment. Uh, okay, here we are. So there we go, that is an artery there, that's the um, pulmonary artery, so that goes off to the lungs. And, and you can see how sort of flexible the atria are, that's, that's an atria there, it's just a sort of flexible bag. Um, it's not really, it doesn't really have to contract at all, so it doesn't need to be particularly muscular, um, doesn't need to contract in any sort of powerful way anyway. And, and that's pretty much it for um, dissection of the heart. So left hand side really reinforced, right hand side not so reinforced, um, valves in there, heart strings and obviously blood vessels coming out, um, arteries and veins going into the atria. Uh, and that's that. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Mr Smith and today I'm going to demonstrate to you combustion. Um, methane is the gas that comes out of our gas taps. Um, what we're going to do here with this apparatus is trap the methane within bubbles, just purely of washing up liquid and, and then we're going to set light to my hands. Um, Miss Sparks, could you light the uh, splint? I'm going to put my safety spectacles on and we're going to start bubbling the methane through the water mixed with washing up liquid here. Whilst that bubbles, I'm just going to make my arms and hands uh, slightly damp so that I don't um, hurt myself. So without dripping water everywhere, I'm just going to take a handful of me plain bubbles and I'm going to ask Miss Sparks to ignite them. And the products of combustion that would have been uh, sent up into the atmosphere are carbon dioxide and water. Hi everybody, welcome to physics. Come with me on a journey of learning. This is what you're going to be doing at secondary school. I'm Mr. Day, we met earlier, we said hello, I'll say hello again. Here you see a physics laboratory. There's the sun. What is the sun? What is a black body? What is light? Here we see some electricity. What is happening here? Physics will uplift your learning. You'll fly high with physics. Over here, oh look, a candle. Famous physicist called Michael Faraday. Very first Christmas lecture about the science, the chemistry, the physics of a candle. On the board you can see some of the work we've done today. But where will you start, you wonder? Where are we going to start the GCSE journey? Here it is. We start with energy, we start with motion, we start with forces and we look at the physics behind roller coasters. So next time you go on a roller coaster, you can tell everybody about the physics and they will thank you for that. <laughs> then we move on. In primary school, you recognise this. Amazing. Remember that feeling when you split white light into its parts? We call it a spectrum. There's the prism. But we look beyond that. We look, we use lasers. Here's a class two laser. Very, very, very powerful. You can see the beam on my hand there. You can see the beam reflecting off the chalk powder. You can see what we call an interference pattern on this ball and you can see the beams. This is a famous experiment with a big question. Is light a wave? Is light a particle? You will find out in A-level physics where if you finish the journey you will have the whole world of physics in your hands. Hi everyone, Mr Arnold here. So we're going to do a bit of chemistry. This is a classic experiment we do in year nine to illustrate the reactivity series. So what I've got in my pot here is a mixture of aluminium and iron oxide. Now the aluminium is more reactive. So when I give it a little bit of energy, it's going to take the oxygen away from the iron. I need a fuse. I'm going to use magnesium for that so that it burns down and provides that energy that's needed. Let's light the fuse. Okay. The fuse is burning down. C2 
So you can see from that, lots of energy was released. It's an exothermic reaction. Now what's happened there is that aluminium has reacted and taken the oxygen away from the iron. So what we should find is that there are little bits of iron now present in our mixture. But that's how chemistry works. I hope you enjoyed it.